Um, all right, thank you guys uh, for coming to this session, and I'm so glad that um, Javier was the one that ran into AV issues, um, and not me. So well, one of the things I, I learned uh, from giving talks is that um, th there's a very strong positive correlation between the number of uh, memes and pictures you put in your slides and how, how happy the audience uh, is, you know, from the session reviews I, I've been seeing. Um, so, so, so I'm going to just put a bunch of pictures on here. I won't do too much talking. Um, but at the end, I, I'm going to do some demos because you do need, a, need some content uh, in, in a tech talk. So we're going to be talking about MLflow. Um, and uh, it's, it's an open source platform for managing the, uh, the machine learning lifecycle. Um, you know, whatever that, that means, we're, we're going to find out in a little bit. And it's a community-driven project, um, um, mostly led by uh, the folks at Databricks, um, with uh, our studio providing the, uh, the, the R interface. So let's talk a little bit about um, the, the motivation for, for a project like this. Um, one of the things that, uh, that the data scientists um, have trouble with, with sometimes is that you don't remember every model that you tried. So, so let's say you're building a neural net, so you got a few layers and uh, maybe a residual connection here and there, and you, you stumble across some hyperparameters that, that seem promising, so, so you sort of you know, go, go into that direction and then tweak some, some numbers. And then um, you know, maybe like an hour later, you, you, you realize that you know, this, the, the performance isn't great, so, so you want to sort of uh, roll back to, to the previous version, but then you were so you know, excited about your results, you didn't bother you know, put, pushing any of your, uh, committing any of your code, so you don't remember what hyperparameters you used. So, you know, um, chuckle, please chuckle. I, I, <laughs> um, so, so, so we're going to talk about how MLflow might, you know, help with that situation um, by, by, by logging your um, metrics and, and your hyperparameters. And um, another thing that sometimes people have issue with is uh, replicating um, uh, your results. And you might want to reproduce uh, your teammates' numbers, or um, you might just want to reproduce your own numbers from yesterday or last week or last quarter. Um, and sometimes, you know, you'll, the, the code will run, and then you'll get some maybe different results, maybe due to some um, you know, random initialization of weights or whatnot, but sometimes it just doesn't work. I mean, you know, missing libraries, uh, mismatch architectures. And um, not every data science project ends with a PowerPoint deck and a steering committee meeting. Sometimes you actually have to take the models to production. Um, and, you, you know, this, it's hard to find a uh, common, common ground depending on where you are. Um, between the, uh, the, 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 the folks who prototype the models and the folks who actually need to take the models to production. And, and this is exacerbated by the fact that there are just so many different um, machine learning libraries out there, and there are also um, different deployment targets, right? So that, that there are d different um, libraries you can use to train the models, and then there are different ways to sort of uh, deploy these models. So. If you got, you know, it's, it's the, the, the number of ways you can sort of combine um, the, 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 the prototyping and the deployment just um, expands exponentially. So if um, you are at some specific companies, um, mostly out there in the Silicon Valley, you, you, you might say, oh, you know, we got this all solved. But then what about everyone else? Um, what do you do? So you, you, you'll go online, you do some Google searches, you'll be like, oh, what's everyone else doing? And then you'll find that, um, especially for model deployment, is, is the, 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 there are just so many different things out there, and it's kind of tough. Um, so over the past um, you know, couple of years, there's been a lot of efforts in the machine learning community and, and also um, within the R community to try to um, solve these problems. Um, or at least attempt to solve these problems. And, you know, I, I personally think that we, we won't ever come up with, like, one framework that's just going to work for everyone. But I, I think we can try to segment um, the problems s such that um, you can have a, a set of um, standard practices that sort of um, will apply to, to, to most people. 
So back to uh, the, the, the topic, ML flow. Um, it's, uh, it's got three different components. Um, it's got tracking, which is going to help you keep track uh, of your hyperparameters, some nodes, and some metrics from your experiments. Uh, the project component bundles your project and environment so others can reproduce your results. And the model component um, allows you to serialize and package your, your model so you can um, deploy them. So of course, you know, this doesn't make any, any sense. So, so we're gonna do some demos to show um, what this thing actually looks like. And if I can figure out where, um, how I'm gonna get there. All right, here we go. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's try to do this. So um, uh, back row, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see or not? Okay, I think we're good. So we, we can uh, you know, load our library. By the way, this is on CRAN, so you can just install it off of CRAN. And I'm just gonna do something really, really general um, right now. So we can say mlflow log param, and then let's say we want to log the food param, and then the value happens to be 42. So what is this doing about background is it's basically launching um, a server and starting an experiment and um, actually logging you know, this parameter. So we can come in here. Um, actually, let me take a step back. So, so this is like the, the default view um, of, the, uh, of the MLflow interface. So we can go into our um, experiment run here, and then we see that our uh, parameter foo has been logged. So, so uh, um, the cool thing is that this is not only for uh, machine learning. If you have other experiments that, that you want to keep track of, um, you can also uh, use this mechanism. So let's say now we want to log a metric. Um, we come back here, we see that um, we have that metric that, that's been recorded. And you know, there are other things you can do. There's tags, there are notes. Uh, you, know, you can write whatever you want. Um, so that, that's sort of the, 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 the tracking functionality. And um, we can now go, go, go to model. So, so, so have you did uh, wrote a little um, XGBoost model to, to try to classify um, iris? And then what we have here is um, a model to try, to try to solve that same problem just using um, Keras and TensorFlow. So I'm going to run this uh, real quick, uh, just go through the code, uh, standardizing values, normalizing values, uh, and then here we can, oh, actually, one thing I, I forgot to mention. Um, when we, when we log, log this parameter right here, we, we started an experiment run, um, and then after you're done with um, your, ex, uh, your experiment run, you, you need to end the run. And then once we do that, you can see that um, you know, there's also a duration um, associated with, with um, your experiment run. So that, that, that you know, might, might be helpful when you're trying to compare different um, ways to try, train the model. Sometimes um, you might you know, spend 10 hours to just get a little bit of accuracy gain. That's not worth it. But um, we can also use this uh, context uh, manager with the, the width um, function, and we can train this uh, very simple feed forward neural net for a few epochs and see um, what happens. So you know you can see real time that uh, the the loss is going down, yeah, and the matrix is uh, the, the accuracy is going up. So we're doing great, um, and then we can go back to our UI, and we see that um, we have our neural net um, training run that has also been logged. And because we added a, um, a, a callback in the Keras uh, model fit call, we can see that MLflow has also logged the, um, the accuracy for each epoch. Okay, so one other thing we did was we 
um, save the, art, uh, the, the, the model as, as an artifact. So you can basically save like anything you want um, and associate it with, with um, an experiment. So uh, what we can do right now is we can attempt to, uh, to, to serve this model um, lo locally just uh, using a, a web server. So using this function mlflow r func serve um, and our model directory is the Keras model because that's where we locked it. And then we can provide the, the run identifier. So we'll do that and then um, we, got, we got a model that's uh, being served right now. It's um, port 8090 and then I got this prepared. So we can um, basically post a bunch of uh, uh, predictor data to, to this predict endpoint um, and then see if we get some results back. So, so we do, so, so these are like the, uh, the probabilities of, um, of each class. Okay, so um, let's go back. We can show a couple more things. Um, you can also run um, projects from, uh, from GitHub. So let's just do this real quick and I can show um, what's going on there. So, so basically what this is doing is um, it's, it's pulling code from GitHub and then spinning up um, a mini environments um, to execute this code and then it's going to log the results to, um, to, to a training run. And if we actually go to um, this URL and our entry point was this trend.r file. We see that we're um, using a, a, a random forest classifier now um, using Spark to try to classify the flowers. So we see that the run has succeeded. Um, so we can go back to the, uh, the ML flow interface and We see that here we, we, we have the parameters that, that were passed um, to, to, the, um, to the project run and then also some metrics associated with it. Um, and, and the cool thing about this is that it records the exact, um, uh, the, the, the exact commits um, on which this code was pulled from. So you can actually um, you know, click on this to, to navigate a repository um, at that specific point in time. Yeah, so I think that's um, all I have to, to show you guys. So, you know, definitely think about what sort of um, applications you, you can apply this to in, in your own um, endeavors. So I think, do, do we have time for questions? Uh, y yep, we have uh, some time for questions if uh, anybody has some. Kevin, one of the things I was uh, wondering about, um, do you have to use the MLflow interface in order to retrieve the metrics which are recorded? Or is it possible to export it to you know, a flat file or uh, to some kind of log? Yeah, the, 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 you, there's, a, um, there's an API that you can use um, that's currently not exported yet in the, um, in the R package, but um, the, 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 there's a, um, a wrapper on the REST interface that you can use to potentially do that. So you don't have to use the, the interface if you don't want to. And then you can also build your own interface um, um, to suit your needs. Any other questions? Hi, Kevin, thanks. Um, how, what is the state of uh, collaboration between Python and R? So can I have an experiment that has parts of its code in Python, the other part in R, and track them in the same uh, experiment on MLflow? Uh, yes, yes, so, so here I, I, I demonstrated, um, for, for example, this, uh, this call to pull some code from GitHub. This did not have to be R code. It could have been, um, it could have been Python code. And if we actually go back to, um, this, um, th this run right here, you see that there's a, a run command that's basically a, 
a, a command line command that anyone can use to reproduce your results. So if you're a data scientist working in R, um, anyone else, even if they have never uh, seen a single line of R code, um, they can, um, you know, try to uh, put different hyperparameters into your model and get some results back. So we, we, we basically um, try to abstract away the, the, the the implementation of the model from the people who want to use the models. Hi. Hi. I, I saw in some of the code that you were making calls to the recipes package, maybe? Oh, yes. Um, is that integrated into MLflow in any way? So uh, the, the, the cool thing about MLflow is that, uh, like in, in the beginning, I was just logging random stuff. Um, so if you wanted to uh, Record um, specifics about um, your tra uh, your data preprocessing step. You can you can definitely do that. So th there's really no limit on like what you can sort of put in there. So so we you know we we logged an entire um, Keras model um, in there too. So uh, you can put like pictures and you know audio file if you if you want. <laughs> 